another day, another site. Another nuisance trip, two boards. We've got a nice Crabtree straw breaker here. So nice, obviously it's an older board and it's uh, not in the neatest of condition. The uh, RCD here is intermittently tripping off one of these circuits. Is our culprit, where's the front of the board, Nigel? Uh, you've put your... Ah, yes, yeah, my oh, bag's on it, isn't it? Uh, what have we got? What are our circuits? Yeah. Shower, upstairs sockets, kitchen sockets plus end wall, mid-bedroom. That'll be where her lamps are plugged in. Downstairs sockets and sockets, helpfully enough. I think it's probably something to do with sockets then, don't you, Nigel? I think it might be. Oops. One, two, three, four, five. We'll have to have each of these out and uh, find what's going on here. Should we start with shower? Which it probably isn't. Have you got um, a pair of pliers? we're looking for is a fault to earth here. So I'm going to join mine in neutral. IR test to earth and see what's reporting with a bit of a, a dicky reading. Can you see the screen on the metro right there? Ch -ch -ch, 823 for the shower, so the shower's good. Nice high number. Let's make a note of these. We didn't think it'd be the shower, did we, Nige? No. 16 amp circuit, 16 amp radial. What was that? Sockets, I think. Sockets, top floor. Yeah, they're all labeled sockets, aren't they? Three stories, this place. Aluminium wiring. Dates it to around the 60s, early 70s. Floor, what do you reckon? I reckon this could be us. Could be our culprit. Bingo Ooh. bongo. Got to 43 volts and bugged out. Yeah. 0.03 socket stop floor. We've got a separate circuit for boiler. I don't think so. What, an old immersion circuit? Well, you've got the immersion up there, but it's just plugged in, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, there used to be an immersion heater up there by the looks of it, so. Uh, that could be an old immersion circuit. Let's leave that one out, shall we? 20 amp radial. We haven't unplugged any appliances or anything from these circuits. No. So uh, these readings, not necessarily the wiring, could just be a bad appliance. 559. Good day. One, two, circuit three. What was that? 559. So that can go back in because that's not our smoking gun. And it's it's going to be this one, isn't it? But we've got to test the others just to make sure. I'll tighten these with the Torque screwdriver later before it gets re energized. I just want to get them out of the way for the moment. Next one's obviously a newer circuit because it's copper. It's a 32 amp, two wires, probably a ring. I think this is going to be the kitchen extension, and I suspect this one's going to be all right. Because we're coupling line to neutral, we're not going to blow anything up by pumping 500 volts through it. Hopefully. Yeah. It's not going to do any harm, is it? 
814. And then there was one. Why are they always the top floor? The ones that are <laughs> so always, you've always got to go up a couple of flights of stairs, haven't you? Last one has two cables coming off it. Although it's a 16 amp breaker. It's either an old broken ring or it's two radials. Potentially, yeah. It's just labelled as sockets here without indicating what floor. So we'll just test them both together. We do, we do have something that reads as garbage. Okay, yeah, I suspect because it's aluminium, it's obviously original to the house. Because it's going to the top floor, there's a good chance, and because it's a, a radial, it's a good chance it used to be the immersion heater circuit, which someone has since converted and plugged the boiler into. So uh, we'll go and have a look at that now. Sometimes if we drop it to 200, let's just make sure we're not reading some... It's not going to be a surge protector, is it? Not with that kind of number, but... Uh, yeah, even at 250, it's a load of pap. Let's get investigating. Of course, you can plug the boiler here. Yeah, we think that we used to be at a, an immersion heater yes. point because there would have been a water heater in there originally. And there's now a combi boiler. Anything in there? Uh, there are sockets. I can't see them. I doubt there's anything major plugged in around here, is there? Mm -hmm. I reckon that circuit is just probably for the boiler. Yeah. Let's see what yeah, reading we get now. Probably doing that. Well, there you go. Boiler. That's, that's all we unplugged, wasn't it? The boiler. I'm going to go take that plug off. Yeah. Uh, well, well was, uh, I unplugged that lamp as well. It was there. I, I, I doubt it's going to be. It. Let's. Uh, we'll take this up and we'll stick this on the plug and see what we get before we take it off. Interesting, Nigel. Yeah. There's an interesting point about that plug top. That plug top predates 1984 because it has no yes. sleeving it has on no its pins. Plastic. So it's a very old plug top. I'm just, just going to couple line and neutral together and test the appliance itself with respect to earth, similar to what would happen in a PAT test. And we can see that it fails, so that's what's dragging our numbers down. The question is, can we do anything about it? Because we're not boiler engineers. We can check the basics, the power going in, the, check the plug, the cable, the connection, but I suspect this is going to be one where a, a gas man's got to come in and... Not very neat, but it's not short in the Nothing to see in there, is it? No. It's a DIY job or plumber job, but that's about it. Unless that core grip, that core grip's on the cores, unless that's crushing something. It is. We'll have a look at that. We'll definitely re, well, we'll re-terminate it. Right, Nigel's on the phone. Okay, I've got the HT uh, 96U clamp on the TIS tester here, so we can clamp the tails and measure earth leakage. It's uh, it's back on. It's uh, it's stable at the moment and we're seeing le leakage of two milliamps do you want to plug that boiler in nige oh straight away yeah it, it just went straight away mate i'm just going to try and reset it no i can't get it back on it's back on still at two milliamps and it's tripped again it's um it's, it's going very suddenly, quicker than the tester is able to read. Okay, if you unplug that. I have unplugged it. Back on. 
and again we're just reading two milliamps so there must be a um, a very quick earth leakage event from that thing oh, these are interesting I'll be out here if you need me now. As I say, we're not boiler engineers, so we're not going to get elbows deep into the guts of this thing. But we are going to have a look for anything obvious. Not a lot to see from our point of view, is there, Nigel? No. Nope. Um, I don't know when this was last serviced or anything, but uh, all we can really do is disconnect the flex and verify that the the flex to the plug is okay and that there's not been a breakdown of insulation within the the feed going into the thing other than that it's a problem with the unit itself but it's quite clear that that's the problem because as soon as you were plugging that in that was tripping off yeah. downstairs before the test we even had a chance to uh, get a brain fart of what the number was so uh, again we'll disconnect the flex we'll uh, check that the uh, line just read in the plug it's still not a uh, Still not a legal plug. Not a proper plug, is it? Well, we don't have another plug with us at the moment, so uh, it'll have to do. We'll verify that it's it's good to the plug, um, or that the lead to the plug's good, and that's as much as we can do for the moment, and she'll have to get a boiler engineer in. But at least we know that we can get the, the power back on to everything else while that's disconnected. Yes. What we got, Nadge? 999. And... No, no, no. Yeah, I didn't think it'd be the cable. All right, I'll have to deliver the bad news. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down and um, retest that circuit with that disconnected, just to see what the circuit's giving us. Right, same circuit again, but with that pesky boiler unplugged. 334, so it's not the wiring itself. It is definitely down to that appliance. All back together and in business. Two milliamps of leakage from that board, not going to trouble the RCD. She's hit us with a while you're here. While you're here, the bathroom lights aren't working. Um, there's no power to the switch, you say, Nigel? No, no power to the and switch. We've got a single cable to the lights. That's interesting because we know these, this lighting circuit's not earthed. We were looking at a um, periodic inspection in 2007, weren't we? Yeah. And they said on there, lighting, cables, lighting circuits aren't earthed. Class two fittings to be used. And what have we got here? We've got a class one fitting. Uh, it is actually an earth in that wire, in that cable. But what, what did you say you could hear up there, Nigel? You can hear a junction. When you move it around, oh, I can feel it as well. So, you I, go, you yeah, what we have here, obviously, then is a, a bathroom fitter special. Your bathroom fitter's put a junction in where no one can access it. And it's put a class one fitting in because. He's an asshole and doesn't know what he's doing. And uh, you end up with a very nice bathroom, or it looks nice, but with stupidity built in. And the, uh, the lady says that she heard something scurrying around in the ceiling. This is not an accessible ceiling, you can see that. We've got the outside world above us here. There's no nothing to crawl into. We've been to these before and we know that there are rats around. Yeah, we have been, been to this house before, haven't we? And, yeah. and we found a switch drop, because the lights were tripping. A switch drop that had been compromised, been chewed through, and I imagine we've got something similar going on here. We've got power at this light. Jeez. Say that again. I was showing it up your nose. Know. Stick the old ferret cam in. And... Uh, See what we got. Let's recharge the battery on this. There are what may be droppings up there. She says she's heard something scurrying around in the ceiling void. So something might be munching on the cables. Well, what are you going to do? Get the friggin' ceiling down, start again. 
battery's running out. Must recharge that. Ah, it seems to be a... Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> seems to have been a red herring. We thought that uh, something might have chewed through a cable, but no, I just found it actually at loose connection at this, in this room, which was affecting the other rooms down the chain. Obviously, you shouldn't be working on that live, so uh, don't do what silly boy Nigel does, folks. Make sure you're safely isolated when working on your electrics. Of course, I'm also working on something live here, just to, uh, just to indicate that there is probably no earth on this thing. We're going to get the TIS-859 onto it. How well can you see that? I don't really want to touch this. No, I'm just brave enough to touch it. That's uh, line neutral. Hopefully you can see 230 volts. Mm. Let's go to earth. I'm taking it, not a sausage there. 0 0.8. Yeah. 0 0.6. Yeah, nonsense. Eight. It's a floating earth. There's nothing yeah. there. Yeah. 240. So there you go. As we thought, it's an unearthed lighting circuit and the bathroom fitter knob that he is has put a class one light in because, well, he doesn't give a fuck, does he? As long as he gets paid. There you go. Happy customer. Well, happy as uh, anyone can be being told that their boiler's shagged. But uh, that's uh, obviously some, someone else's problem for another day. It's a big white box on the wall to us, isn't it, Nige? It is. Oh, I've got a scotch egg left over for you. Don't, yeah. don't eat that now, this is thing. I'm going to eat that tonight and you'll smell it tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh yeah, no you're not working tomorrow. I'll have to, I'll have to brew it up until Monday, won't I? Right, young man, let's call out a day, eh? And go and get wankered.